can access internet and you know just take a look at what Al Qaeda wants, what Al Shabaab wants. So that's self radicalization. How can we fight that? Well, you know that's a complicated subject, and uh, I suspect that people are about to get their PhDs just studying that subject. But on uh, an helicopter look at it, it would mean that the state must start interacting more with the citizens. Mm -hmm. Because majority of Kenyans, your first interaction with the security agencies, maybe a policeman, it's normally a nasty one. Maybe they're stopping you by the streets, mm -hmm. they're arresting you, they're intimidating you, and uh, they're demanding uh, a bribe. Right. So whatever you see, a policeman, or whatever you see anybody in uniform, mm -hmm. you want to run away very fast because of that sad experience. Mm -hmm. But if all of us become owners of a nation called Kenya, then we become loyal to the nation called Kenya, mm -hmm. the state called Kenya, then it's very easy for you to pick the information and give it to the policemen. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, we had uh, incidences, or rather the, the community policing, where people started interacting with the state very closely. You would actually give the information to the police and they would act on that. But today, if you smell a rat and you go to the policeman and they're giving them information, the first thing they're going to do is to treat you as a suspect. Mm -hmm. They'll start interrogating you, they'll start grilling you, and at the end of the day, they penalize you. Mm -hmm. But if we become loyal to the state, then it's very easy for the civilians to share this information with the, any security agencies. And that's the reason why a state like Israel is very strong today. Mm -hmm. Because you see, they're surrounded by about 600 million Arabs. All of them want to see every Jewish man dead. But because these people, the population of only 4 million, because all of them are very loyal to the state, it's very easy for them to share intelligence. And one hopes, when, uh, rather that when Netanyahu was in Kenya, our security agencies actually took the opportunity of engaging with him so that we can share best practices. Mm -hmm. Because even the U.S. has been able to stop all these kind of attacks simply by using the Mossad way. Mm -hmm. That everybody is told that uh, the state called Kenya, you are a shareholder. If Kenya burns, you're going to burn as well. But I know what is likely to happen. When you see all these men of corruption in Kenya, the politicians becoming instant millionaires, not paying attention to Wajiku, then people throw their hands in their hand. They say, what's the big deal? Mm -hmm. If Kenya is going to ban, I'm not a shareholder. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I, I think the state has got that unique opportunity of making everybody understand that this is your nation, Kenya, and there should be a reward for giving this information to the policemen. Mm -hmm. Although, again, that needs to be taken care of in a very judicial manner so that if I don't like... Uh, say Anyango somewhere, mm -hmm. then I do not go to the police and say this Anyango is a terrorist and uh, you go have, go have arrested. Mm -hmm. right, even mm -hmm. before we move to the nation, you speak of intelligence and you say we need uh, better, you know, better intelligence, better technology. But uh, in many of these terror attacks we've seen, uh, it always emerges that there was intelligence that uh, you know, there would be an impending terror attack, mm -hmm. but the attack still happens. Mm -hmm. In the case of Kapenguria, uh, we've had uh, colleagues of this police officer come out and say he looked lonely and disturbed before this attack. And you know, this this would be an indication that something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So Kenyans seem to have intelligence given to them. We just don't, ha we don't, we, we don't act on it. No, if you look at uh, New York, which has done very well in mm. terms of uh, gathering intelligence, and this was an initiative started off by Rudolf Giuliani when he was uh, the mayor. He encouraged people to share information and uh, there was a reward. Mm. And you are never, ever penalized. Now, for instance, looking at the rock policeman, as people refer to him in uh, Kapenguria, he was active on social media. So I suspect a number of his colleagues within the police force were his friends on social media mm -hmm. or they followed him on Twitter or they were active with him on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So they had this information. And it's really unacceptable that after such a situation has occurred, it's when some of his colleagues come out and say, no, this guy looked like a loner. And uh, he made some nasty postings on mm -hmm. uh, social media. And you know, it was not a one off posting, it was a continuous and it was a consistent. Yeah, one of them was his WhatsApp profile picture. Yeah. You know, that's very open, that's very public. Mm -hmm. And so, in issues like that, why don't we um, act on issues like that? You, you know, that means that the, 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 the police had the information too close to them mm -hmm. for them to be able to understand what it is. Right. And then, uh, number two, and maybe again this requires very serious investigation by the relevant agencies. The fact that they had already been radicalized before joining the police service mm -hmm. is actually worrying. Meaning, there are maybe even uh, there's a large percentage of uh, people in our security agencies mm -hmm. who are sympathetic to the Al Shabaab cause and Al Qaeda, and nobody seems to know them. Mm -hmm. And you know that's really a failing in the in the work of the police service. But again, we go back to the biggest problem affecting the nation. 
which is called corruption and the lack of inclusivity. Today, if you want any of your relatives to join the police service, during the recruitment process, all you need to do is to have a nice khaki envelope and give it to one of the officers, mm -hmm. and they're going to join the police service. So, if you are not able to vet the people joining our security agencies right from the word go, then even managing um, this radicalization is going to be a challenge. And probably the Kapenguria cop was not a very sharp man that he even went on uh, Facebook, but I think he was daring enough telling people that this is what I'm going to do, and in Sheng, as they say, Mutadu, mm -hmm. and you know the information was out there, right. but nobody seemed to act on it. And again, I don't know why we keep on comparing ourselves to other countries, but in a country like Israel, you can never be admitted to the security agencies if people cast aspersions on your loyalty to the state. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if you've a uh, mixed blood, maybe from uh, Africa or from Arab and stuff like that, there are a number of agencies that you cannot join. So I'm beginning to wonder why don't you have the same in Kenya? Mm -hmm. Before people join the any service, security service, military intelligence, they must be very salivating to be sure that these guys are actually loyal to Kenya. But again, when you go back to corruption, a policeman who wants to put up a house in uh, Moyale is given under a thousand bob. He'll admit anybody to join the service. Mm -hmm. And the same is happening from guys coming from Somali. They're not necessarily Kenyans, but they've got a Kenyan passport, they've got a Kenyan ID, and their residence. So they learn a few words in Swahili. When there's a recruitment, they're pushed through. They, they join the service, and these are the people who will be engaging in mischief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the Saturday Nation. And uh, we're back to politics now. Raila fights off Jubilee assault on Stronghold. And that's a, a story that continues on page four of uh, the Saturday Nation. So this uh, past year, we've had uh, Deputy President William Ruto visit Kisi region over eight times. <laughs> but we also had uh, Raila Odinga visit Nyamira County. And he said, you know, just uh, trying to tell the people, don't uh, uh, leave ODM, don't leave court and join um, Jubilee because they don't fulfill their promises. Mm -hmm. But this past week, the Deputy President was in Kisi County and they've done several things. They've built roads, um, they're building, I don't know, a milk processing uh, plant. And they're mm -hmm. doing things and development for the people of Kisi County. County. Mm -hmm. So these defections are, are sparking a lot of scrambles for the vote, the Kisi vote, the Luya vote. Mm -hmm. what's, what's, what, what are the dynamics at play here? Well, in, you know, uh, lo looking at Kisi as a, as a nation, Kisi is the most democratic uh, community mm -hmm. in Kenya. From the time of uh, multi-party politics, at no stage, apart from when Simon Nyacha was running for president, when they voted to a man for one person. Mm -hmm. But they keep on voting people from all different uh, political parties. It's as if they've got a national strategy. Like, for instance, in Kisi today, there's an MP from TNA, there's an MP from ODM, there's an MP from Fonkeja, there's an MD, sorry, an MP from NAC, Charity Ngilu is a political party. So if you parade all the Kisi members of the National Assembly and Senate, you'll find them from across all the political parties. But now there's an er erroneous perception indicated by the media that actually the DP is initiating uh, development projects, which mm -hmm. is not the case. Those are not national projects, national government projects. Right. Those are projects initiated by the county governments. Mm -hmm. But again, Kisi is going to be very key in this election because it's considered to be a swing state. So depending on how the people in Kisi decide to mm -hmm. vote, it can actually tilt and uh, give uh, a winner, the 50 plus one, that are, the magical plus one that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But anybody going to Kisi, if you look at the historic uh, perspective, mm -hmm. traditionally, there's been bad blood between uh, the population in Kisi and uh, the deputy president, right. Ruto, occasioned by the post-election violence. Mm -hmm. But juries of uh, people in Kisi blame uh, Ruto for that kind of mischief mm -hmm. because they say he's a member of the Kalenji nation and they suffered during uh, that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the DP knows uh, as much. So he's actually trying to mend faces, mm. and that's why he's making so many visits to Kisi. So he's trying to really warm up the relationship. But really, at the end of the day, whether or not the Kisi decide to form their own political parties, those people are very liberal, and during the election, they'll be looking at every candidate and saying, what have you done for us lately? Mm -hmm. So they'll be assessing your development records. Majority of the people in Kisi are not like other parts of uh, Kenya, that are, will be induced maybe because they are given food. Because, right. you know, other parts of the world, or other parts of Kenya, there's normally a drought situation, there's a famine, so they keep on receiving food. But Kisi is uh, very rich in mm. terms of agriculture. And the people are generally... Uh, I'd like, I'm looking for a term which is slightly liquid compared to rude, but they're generally rude and arrogant. Mm -hmm. And if you tell them that we are coming to give you a road, 
they'll tell you barabara peraka uko. If you are telling them that you want to work on their maybe milk or maize, they're not bothered because they're self-sufficient. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now on page five, uh, Ruto urges Rift, uh, Rift Valley residents to stay in Jubilee and uh, forget uh, the opposition. But this comes even as Kano Chairman Gideon Moy uh, said he out of the Jubilee government for um, sort of uh, sidelining uh, Rift Valley members of parliament and um, so he says that, uh, you know, like the Kenya Airports Authority, you know, we, we've had uh, changes there. Uh, many of those removed were from the Rift Valley region. But the question here is why are we speaking along tribal lines while we're still trying to fight uh, tribalism? Because why should we say because so-and-so was from Rift Valley and was removed from this position, then the Jubilee government is sidelining people from Rift Valley? Do you know, the, number one, when you look at our political parties, all of them are anchored on... Uh, tribal origins. Mm. Like for instance, uh, TNA is Piwa Kikuyu, URP is uh, Piwa Kalenji, for Kenya is considered to be lawyers, Odium is considered to be Luo. And the reason why people would kill each other to attain political office, number one, is to access these uh, public appointments. Mm. Number two is to access corruption. Like for instance, the case of the Kenya Airports Authority, it was very interesting. There at some stage the chairman was a Kalenji Fela and the MD was a Kalenji Fela. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was infighting between, between uh, the Jubilee that we'd like to balance it. I have a chairman from maybe TNA and the MD from uh, URP. And that has been sadly the case in mm. Kenya. That's the reason why during election time, even people are very sophisticated in life, people who understand best practices will go back to their tribal enclaves. If, for instance, you are an engineer and you come from uh, Rift Valley, you'll go and campaign for URP hoping that when uh, the deputy president, or rather, if Ruto becomes the DP or becomes the president, is going to give you a public position. And that's how we, we, we keep on uh, losing the plot at all times. Mm -hmm. And um, for us to make progress, people should be rewarded based on a meritocracy. Mm -hmm. that if you're looking for somebody to manage Kenya airports, do you have any ev evidence in uh, aviation management that uh, you can actually deliver the job? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't matter whether you come from Kisi, or you come from Moranga, or you come from Nyeri. But one understands and gets the reason why we had to get a white man is to make sure that uh, the people in the Jubilee are happy. Because your people were saying that if it's not our man, we, we are not happy with this. And then Tine was saying if it's not our man, oh, and yeah. I think there was a compromise, then I bring a, a white man. But I know in, in the next few days, when the white man lands in Kenya and he takes over the position, he'll begin to understand tribalism. And one hopes he's going to stay above the fray. And uh, you go back to Safaricom. When Michael Joseph was at Safaricom, the organization ran very well. And when it was about to exit and people wanted to get a, a Kenyan manager, nobody would agree on anybody. Mm -hmm. That's why they had to get uh, Bob Colimo. Right. So you begin to wonder, is Kenyan so sick that uh, corruption is actually part of our DNA, that uh, this is the way it has to work? And tribalism, and, right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Michelle, the, the, the tragedy in Kenya is that uh, the political leadership was supposed to be visionaries, was supposed to take us to canon, are actually short-sighted, they're myopic, and... Uh, the public pronouncements they make and what happens in reality, those are two different worlds. Mm -hmm. Because the DP, the deputy, and the three court principles, they keep on always saying, we want to unite Kenyans. And for me, from where I'm seated, actually, you wouldn't say that Kenyans are not united. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are united because all of us are fighting ignorance, poverty, and a disease. Mm -hmm. We are united. We want to make our economic space a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But our leadership keeps on failing us. If we had a good leadership in Kenya, we would be in the space of uh, Singapore and South Korea. Mm -hmm. Because uh, during independence, we had the same economic parameters. But now 50 years later, we are receiving foreign aid from uh, Singapore. Even a country that we keep on comparing ourselves to called uh, uh, Rwanda. Right. A few years ago, there was genocide, and the nation came to an abrupt stop. Now, all of a sudden, they're running the region. If anybody wants to invest in uh, the Eastern Africa part of the world, they're likely to go to Kigali mm -hmm. because there's a leadership which focuses on the future. And you know, the African Union has never had its summit outside the European, sorry, outside Ethiopia, but it's now going to be taking right. place in uh, Kigali. Mm -hmm. Then you begin to wonder, we have, we have uh, the KICC in Nairobi, we've got a lot of hotels in Nairobi, where was Kenyan's leadership when a decision was taken that we are going to have the African uh, Union summit outside Ethiopia? Mm -hmm. How come Kenya as a nation, we did not run for it so that we can take advantage of what we have in Kenya. Because mm -hmm. I doubt whether Kigali has got enough beds for mm -hmm. all these presidents. But again, see where we are, because what is rewarded in the public sector is uh, mediocrity and corruption. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to succeed, 
you'll be punishing yourself for no reason. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for uh, that uh, in-depth analysis, the political commentator Desmos Bokua, uh, with the in-depth analysis of what's in the dailies this morning. Many thanks for watching that segment of the Weekend Express. Let's take a short break now. But when we come back, we have another interview on a citizen who has several petitions before Parliament to make constitutional amends. Don't go too far. This is KTN News.